and welcome back. Oh. Let's start this up again. Why don't I think we might have a why don't they? Why, why don't they just? Oh, weird. Then, that was like a dark double. key is minor. Like, mm. why don't they just? It was like a Gregorian chant. Yeah. Da, 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 da. It's the same it was, uh, <laughs> interval as the Imperial March. Here we go. Why don't they just... Da, da. By way of T-Pain. Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway, so so this came from Ramsey, and we thought this might be kind of fun. So why didn't the shuttle add emergency chutes to the crew segment to provide a bunker-like abort scenario for failure events like the Challenger disaster? This is probably in response to the, the Challenger thing on... Uh, on Netflix right mm-hmm. now, and I think we had talked about this once before, or Tim, maybe you had brought it up in, in your video about um, does Starship have an abort system? Right. Um, yeah. So, so how about I just hand that off to you? We'll oh no, I wanna, you. no, I want to hear you guys. Let's start. Let's do Ben. Ben, why don't they do that? It, it, why explain, didn't they do that? It, explain what he's saying. Like like a um, a module in the shuttle that would jettison and then have a shoot. Pretty or much, like yeah, like why ejector the crew... seats, like a like a fighter jet. I think it's more like why doesn't the crew cabin kick? Why Separate couldn't it eject out. and parachute down? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a reasonable idea, uh, but on the on the flip side, it probably like the shuttle. It took what twelve years to engineer it or something. It's probably a bit beyond. I don't know. There might have been some constraints that said, like, yeah, basically, that's going to add another ten years of engineering or something like that. I don't know. Like, it seems like a reasonable thing, but there's probably some technical reason as to why it doesn't make sense. Joe. Okay, unless my memory's failing me, which it probably is. Um, I seem to remember after the Challenger explosion, there was talk of something like this, like real, like they did actually consider it. Um. If nothing else, to like just sort of uh, fortify the crew cabin so that if something like that happened, it could it could float back down or something and be insulated from fire and explosions and stuff. Um, and I'm I'm assuming that at that point they'd already kind of had their fleet and they would have had to completely redo the entire ship and they probably were seeing the writing on the wall for the program anyway. That's my guess. So I I think yeah you guys both pretty much taught, like kind of have the the things is yeah a lot of the fleet was pretty much already set in stone so to to add something like that would not just be like a simple well let's take a hacksaw here stick a couple of rocket motors there and some explosive bolts and we'll just eject from the vehicle if we need to you know it's um I th- yeah like exactly like I said in the that Starship abort video uh, there's two jets that have had a whole cabin that can eject like that um, I think one was like the the original like B one had a had a ejection. Another mm-hmm. prototype vehicle had a, had an ejection cabin. So there is some precedence for that. Um, there's two really big challenges though when it comes to the space shuttle in particular. Um, one, the aerodynamic forces. When you know if this was to happen, you know at like max Q would abs like if you're separating from your anything like it just start starts this whole chain of events of crazy mm-hmm. things that can happen. So to be able to have something, you know, pop out or the, you know, detach from something is just, it's really hard. It's really hard on a pointy little normal rocket. It's exceptionally hard when you're in the wake of a pointier rocket in front of you when you're down off the side and you pop out of the, you know, like, it'd be really hard to not just get obliterated by that. But the other big thing is um, they had, they originally flew with ejection seats for the two, for the pilot and the commander up in the, the, the flight deck. Um, had ejection seats uh, for the first four flights and they would have had parachute or they had parachutes with them in case something would happen. But obviously you have a very small window of time, again, aerodynamic forces, all that stuff when that's feasible. But the big thing is if they were to deploy their parachutes, the parachutes would likely get just absolutely torn up by the solid rocket booster exhaust, which can't be turned off. You know, the space shuttle yeah. could not turn off those rocket boosters. So if you do detach from something and the rocket boosters are still firing, you're going straight into the wake of two of the most powerful engines and the the space shuttle main engines. You know, you're you're going right into the bad pe- <laughs> the bad right. bad place. 
<laughs> so like in order to actually do this, you would have to like not use solid rocket boosters, which would have to re-engineer like a huge, it's not like now we have to make rocket boosters. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you're could, like, that wasn't on the plan, but now. It's just one of those things where they just looked at it as like, what would it take to do it? And what's it, you know, they just really thought that the space shuttle was going to be engineered to the point of you're now adding complexity. And that is an, in some ways adding more risk because now you're adding right. more parts, more subsystems and things like that. And they really did believe, especially after they, even after they looked at the challenger and what happened, they really just thought, okay, we, we messed up there. You know, we made a big mistake and when we got go fever and they made a couple changes to a few abort scenarios and things like that. But they really did think they had engineered a system safe enough that just negated the need for a general abort system. But in hindsight, obviously I think, the families of Challenger and after watching the Netflix documentary, it just makes you go, why didn't they have some kind of backup? Yeah. You know, Re very reasonable request, right? Very reasonable. Very like, reasonable idea. request. Yeah. Yeah. It's just frustrating. You know, it is frustrating. That's still one of my biggest beefs with Starship as it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you said, Ben, maybe after it practices landing or whatever, like I'll want that to be done a thousand times before we consider <laughs> people on it. And yeah. yeah, without an abort system, because there's a lot that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is definitely a recommendation uh, this weekend. Watch the the if if you want to be sad, <laughs> watch the. Who doesn't want to be sadder these days? Yeah, 2020. Just soak or, it in, soak in the or sadness. Depending on your mental state right now, it could be uplifting. Right, <laughs> like, at least... you, you could be at such a dark, low place that maybe it'll make you feel better. Like, well, hey, at least that's not me. You know, <laughs> but but in all honesty, it's an incredible documentary. I mean, it is really, really, really well done and wonderful footage. A lot of footage I had not seen yet, and I look at this stuff for a living. You know, it's a lot of really cool things. So I definitely, I do recommend watching it, even though it is sad and it's hard to watch parts of it. But they just do such a phenomenal job; it's worth watching. It's not like it's hard to watch. You're not like gut wrenched the whole time because they do a. It's more than just like that moment and that stuff. But it's, yeah. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com/yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.